This show is sponsored by Alicia's Pillows and Things. Check out the Facebook page, Alicia's Pillows and Things, where you will find home decor you will not be able to resist at prices anybody can afford. Check out the pillows and stools of your favorite sports teams. Maybe you want a set of your kid's favorite cartoon or movie character. You can also get full body and neck pillows as well. Log on to NGSCSports.com and go to the Alicia's Pillows and Things tab on the homepage to complete your order. It makes a great gift for Christmas at an affordable price. NGSC Sports. We never stop. You're listening to NGSC Sports Radio. Hear us live on NGSCSports.com where you can get awesome analysis for all things sport. Or check out our podcasts on iHeartRadio, Spreaker, iTunes, TuneIn, and much more. For our latest videos, head to NGSC Sports' YouTube channel. Follow us on Twitter at NGSC Sports and like us on Facebook. NGSC Sports. We never stop. Do you believe we are Guccifer? Welcome, everyone. <laughs> that's that's how you want to start off. Yeah, I don't have sleigh bells. Hmm. I mean, technically it doesn't matter. Um, since Christmas has already passed. Welcome, everyone, to episode 294 of the Foreign Affair Podcast. My name is Edward Green. Uh, not joined, as always, by McCall and Crime West Bradshaw. Uh, we will be joining us later today for a little bit of Anfield Corner. Don't you worry, friends. He will be coming in. Um, so that we will be getting that later. But first, so much to talk about on this Christmas post-Eve. Um, Christmas, uh, whatever the day after Christmas is called. Um, we're going to be bringing you tons from the matches that took place. Getting you a recap of the Premier League. Of course... I'm actually recording this on Thursday, which is something we don't usually do. Uh, but once I realized that everybody plays today on Boxing Day, except for Wolves and City, I said, hey, we'll wait and uh, we'll do a full recap so we can get these games in as well. So quick recap of these matches, and then we'll uh, we'll hit a very, very, very brief news and notes, then the watch for, and then and then join Wes Bradshaw for a Christmas Anfield corner. Um, with that... Um, we'll say, of course, this podcast is presented by NGSC Sports at NGSCSports.com. We never stop, uh, as well as Alicia's Pillows and Things. Listen, hey, maybe you didn't get exactly what you wanted for Christmas, and that's okay. That that can happen to the best of us, but that's why you need to go check out Alicia's Pillows and Things on Facebook and uh, and see what she's got. Um, you know, maybe you got a sweater that you really didn't want. And you say, huh, what's, what's something better I could have? Well, go check out Alicia's Pills and Things and she'll have something you want. And if you don't, you can ask her, send her a message on Facebook and, uh, and see if she can hook you up with a custom made thing. Um, so again, that's Alicia's Pillows and Things. Go check her out. She has a ton of great stuff on there on her Facebook page, Alicia's Pillows and Things. All right, it's time for the recap of Match Week 18 and 19 of the Premier League. So we had to get back to Saturday, December 21st. Twas the Saturday before Christmas and all through Goodison Park. Not a goal was scored. Not even, um, by nobody's name runs the park, I think. I'm going to be so mad if I see later there was somebody. Anyway, doesn't matter. Everton and Arsenal played to a nil-nil draw in front of their new managers, uh, Carlo Ancelotti and Mikhail Arteta, respectively. That's the word. Um, so, hey, no-nil draw. It is what it is. Uh, Southampton got a very important win over Aston Villa 3-1. Danny Ings cannot stop scoring. And I'll tell you what, if Southampton survives this year... Uh, I joked a couple, didn't joke, but I mentioned a couple of weeks ago how there was a part of me that thinks maybe Obama Yang should be the Premier League MVP. Maybe Danny Ings should also be in this conversation again. If Southampton stayed up, he's on a he's on a eleven goals so far. 
11 goals for Southampton. That's that's the difference maker right now for this group. Uh, he has scored in three, four, five, six of his last seven matches for the club. Uh, only missing the uh, the West Ham one a couple weeks ago, uh, but did score again two here against Aston Villa to add to his totals. Southampton doing things, and we'll get to uh, their great week they were having just in a little bit later. Uh, Newcastle with a very big win over Crystal Palace, 1-0. Uh, it was an 83rd minute goal from Miguel Almaron. Uh, that was the difference maker in that one. Uh, West Ham and Liverpool, they're playing later. Don't worry about it. It happened. Uh, well, it will happen, I guess. Uh, Wolves come from behind win against Norwich 2-1 on the road. Raul Jimenez with the goal in the 81st minute to give Wolves all three points and continue their amazing run in top flight football over the last year and a half. Uh, Sheffield United, they keep on keeping on a 1-0 victory over Brighton. Uh, Burnley also with a 1-0 victory over Bournemouth. Jay Rodriguez with the 89th minute winner for Burnley at the Vitality. And then Manchester City and a thrilling 3-1 clash against Leicester at the Etihad. They get the victory there. Uh, Riyad Mahrez, Ilkay Gundogan, and Gabriel Jesus with goals there to cancel out Jamie Vardy's opening party in the 22nd minute. Um, and then on Sunday, it was Watford 2, Manchester United 0. Um, cool. that That's United losing to apparently worst teams and beating better teams than them. That's apparently the story of their season right now, as we'll get to later the Newcastle game. Um, and then Chelsea uh, beats Tottenham 2-0 thanks to a brace from Willian, one on a penalty and one in the 12th minute um, on it, uh, from open play as uh, Chelsea stays in fourth place with a victory over Tottenham. Uh, but don't worry, guys. The torch has totally been passed from Josie to Frank Lampard. Totally. Chelsea's fine. Um, Tottenham then gets right back onto it today on Boxing Day. 2-1 win over Brighton. Uh, it was an early goal canceled out from Harry Kane, but he would get his in the end. The 53rd minute goal would equalize things for Tottenham. And then Dele Ali can't stop, won't stop scoring lately. Uh, he is a goal in the 72nd minute is the difference makers. Tottenham gets the 2-1 victory. Uh, Aston Villa, very important win over Norwich one well need Aston Villa needs as many points as they can get, and Connor Horahane is the provider there in the 64th minute. Uh, Southampton, big week for them. Two no victory on the road at Stamford Bridge against Chelsea. Uh, Abafemi with one of the goals of the week in the 31st minute, and, and then Nathan Redmond adding the second in the 73rd. So, guys, the torch has been passed to Lampard. Everything's great. Yeah, not an overreaction at all. I'm sorry. It's, you know, what, what I was afraid would happen in the Premier League. This happening is kind of happening. Uh, there's, I thought we'd have two really, really, really good teams. Uh, and then like 18 other kind of eh teams, sort of. Uh, it might be 19. Like the, ver the, the, the variance of the meh. Is like City and Leicester and and to an extent like Chelsea and Tottenham are like they're good. City might even be great at points, uh, and if they get Laporte back in a month or so, they they might hit that really really high ceiling. Um, but otherwise, yeah, this is the Premier League is a sea of mediocrity right now, where anybody can beat anybody, and that's super interesting. At least for Liverpool, thanks for screwing that one up. Um, but Anyone can beat anyone, and that makes it super interesting if you're neutral. But then you look and you're like, everybody's just kind of fine. Like, I don't even know if there's truly any bad teams in the Premier League. Like, truly bad teams. Like, even Norwich. Like, I don't think they're good, but I don't think they're truly bad. Like, they're they're entertaining at the very least, even in their, their not goodness. Um, so, I don't know. Like, like, what's what's our top ten here? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Like Newcastle is tenth, and Newcastle isn't even very good. Crystal Palace is ninth. They're not good. They're 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 okay. They're pretty good. They're just kind of eh. But like, 
And that's that's what I'm worried about the Premier League when we we've been talking the past couple of years this big English football resurgence to overtake the Spanish. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's it's fine. It's okay, I guess. I don't know. We'll see. So, like like City just worries me right now a little bit. Um, and Leicester, I don't think is in it really for the long haul anymore. Um, like they're still good. They, they, I mean, they're still good enough to finish top four this year. Don't, don't, don't get it twisted. But I, I've, I've realized that this league is very outside of like Liverpool. This league is just pretty okay. Um, from like top to bottom. Um, again, city, if, if they get Laporte back, um, that that can maybe change. Um, they they still are so good offensively, and um, that they they can do things. But otherwise, it's just eh, it's it make again makes it super interesting. Like I don't think there's that many matches where you can just go and say, "Hey, that's an automatic win," both because no clubs are that bad, and also no clubs are that good. So eh, it makes it pretty good for a neutral. But I don't know. I just, I don't think it's that. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know how to feel about it. Like, I don't know if it would be better if we had just like six super strong teams and then 14 teams of crap. Um, or if it's better that we have like one absurdly strong team and 19 teams that range somewhere from really good to, yeah, they're fine. They're okay. They're not that good, but they're not terrible. Because that's where we are right now. So, eh, anyway, that's my diatribe over. Uh, which is to say, again, who cares? Uh, <laughs> Everton beats Burnley 1 0. Dominic Calvert Lewin getting uh, Everton off to a good start here. Uh, I believe this was uh, Ancelotti's first match. That might be wrong. I might be. I believe I, I saw that. Yep. There you go. So, hey, Carl Ancelotti, he's a great manager. He's going to be, like, super great. He's going to win a, to a ton of cups at, at Everton. Don't worry, guys. He's It's totally fine. No, Nothing to question at all. Zero, zero questions about it. It's fine. Um, Palace beats West Ham 2-1. Uh, two late goals. And this one from Palace. Get them the victory over West Ham. Uh, Chiquiote. Uh, just uh, before 70 minutes, and then Jordan AU with the winner in the 90th uh, to give some Boxing Day madness at Palace. Uh, Sheffield United with a somewhat disappointing 1-1 draw against Watford, although maybe Watford is playing a little bit better now. Uh, Gerard De La Feu with the goal for Watford, uh, and it was a penalty in the 36th minute that got Sheffield United back, which Oliver Norwood stepped up to take and took it well. Um, Bournemouth and Arsenal also drew 1-1. Uh, Dan Ryan Gosling with the goal in the 35th minute for the Cherries. Uh, and that man, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang with the goal in the 63rd minute. Uh, it means Mikel Arteta starts with a draw in his tenure at Arsenal. Uh, Manchester United absolutely blitzed Newcastle 4-1 after falling behind early, uh, which meant Newcastle passed United in the table, as Michael Cox said on Twitter. So that meant, hey, United, they're now playing a team better than them. Got to play really good. Uh, and they did. Uh, Anthony Martial with a pair of goals in that one. Give United the strong, strong victory. And then uh, as I'm reporting this on you now, uh, it is the 69th minute. Nice. Uh, Liverpool lead Leicester 1-0. And with that, Liverpool have pretty much won the league. So, yeah. There you go. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> the league the league just became very boring, I think, for like the next five months. It's just yeah, it's gonna be what it is. It's fine. So hey, hey, every other man hey second through twentieth. Um that's that's gonna be fun. Although now as we look at the table, oh real quick, before we look at the table, I do want to mention that tomorrow being Friday, uh Wolves and Man City will be playing at the Molyneux at 245. That should be a fun one. Uh, again, Wolves, I believe, beat City there last year. Uh, and they'll be looking to do it again this year. Uh, Wolves, such a great story. So proud of this team. Um, as they uh, they continue to fight. They're also still in Europa League. That's awesome to see. So, uh, so we'll see how Wolves can keep it up. Um, and then after this Friday, that match, concludes Match Week 19. Hey, 
hey, we got to keep going. So, more matches Saturday. Yeah. I'm doing finger thumbs, guns. Yeah. 7.30 is uh, Brighton versus Bournemouth. And then at 10 a.m., it's Newcastle versus Everton. Southampton versus Palace. Watford versus Villa. Then at 12.30, you get West Ham versus Leicester. And Norwich versus Tottenham. And then at 2.45, it's Burnley hosting United. On Sunday, it's at 9 a.m., it's Arsenal versus Chelsea. 11.30, it's Liverpool Wolves. And at 1 p.m., it's Manchester City versus Sheffield. So... Because we gotta gotta keep playing gotta keep playing matches and then and then on Wednesday January first it's it's even more matches guys because gotta keep playing matches God forbid we have a break God you know yeah you get that one week off in February though that's pretty cool two seven thirty a.m. matches on New Year's Day Burnley versus Aston Villa along with Brighton versus Chelsea. 10 a.m. you get Newcastle, Leicester, Southampton, Tottenham, and then Watford Wolves. 12.30 you get City versus Everton, West Ham, Bournemouth, and Norwich Palace. And then at 3 p.m. it's Arsenal versus United from the Emirates. Then on January 2nd, it's Liverpool versus Sheffield United at 3. So that that will not have been played by the time. And then it's, you know, technically a week off, but then it's an FA Cup weekend. So, yay. That's the worst. This this schedule. Everybody sucks. Oh, it's so many matches. It's so much fun. Who fucking cares? It's too much. It's actually too much. Ah, it's so dumb. Like, I get that. You, I guess you have to... I, I, again, very controversial. Just get rid of the League Cup. Just get rid of it. No one cares. No one cares. So, look... When, when Liverpool would rather send their first team to Dubai to play in a Club World Cup of just two matches against relatively mediocre competition than play in the quarterfinals of your super prestigious second-rate Vietnamese energy drink League Cup. Like, come on, guys. Come on. It's it's time. It adds run. Just get rid of the League Cup. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go, everybody. League Cup, get rid of it. Put the Premier League to 18 teams. There, said it. What? What you want? What you want? That's right. I said it. Big, big change. Big takes. Big takes here when I'm by myself. Big takes. Get rid of the League Cup. Go to 18 teams. Your table looks like this as we uh so Liverpool just scored another goal, so they're gonna win. Uh which means they're gonna be at fifty two points. Uh Leicester are gonna be at thirty nine, which means they're too many points behind. Um City also are gonna be too many points behind. Um Chelsea are six points out of third. Uh Tottenham still Three points back at Chelsea, along with Sheffield United. They are in fifth and sixth. And then Manchester United are in seventh with 28 points. At the bottom of your heart, it's the relegation zone. Uh, West Ham just outside with 19 points. Aston Villa just inside with 18. Watford with 13. And Norwich with 12. That's kind of my worry is that the, prim- the title is pretty much wrapped up. Watford and Norwich are pretty much at, almost at this point guaranteed to go down, I think. Like... Sorry. So, I don't know. I guess it'll be like who finishes fourth and who finishes 18th are going to be the two big things over the next five months. So, I don't know. Get get excited. Yay. It's fun. Premier League. I don't know. Like, the race for fourth will be pretty good, I guess. I I don't know. Like, I, I feel like. Leicester and City pretty much have at this point, I think, second and third kind of locked up. So now it's just, it's like Chelsea Spurs and maybe even Sheffield United along with Manchester United and maybe Wolves fighting for fourth. I don't think Wolves can get fourth. Um, I know I love them. I I don't, I don't think they're going to get fourth, Um, especially with them staying in Europa, I think, but it's fine. It, them having a good run in Europe and maybe finishing like fifth or sixth again, 
that's so good for wolves. So, anyway. Um, yeah, prepare for a super exciting next five months of Premier League football. I mean, the matches will be interesting because, again, who fucking knows who will beat who, but... Yeah, it's... It is what it is, I guess. Yay! So, this will be another year where title will be wrapped up by, like, early April. So... Woo! <laughs> it's just, it's so boring. I mean, I get, I get, it's... It's one of the things where, like... You don't want to Americanize it. I get it. But, like... And last year it was very close. So, uh, we last year was very close. Um, I think three years ago it was very close. Uh, when Chelsea, Liverpool, and City were all pretty close, and City ended up winning. Uh, and then, of course, a couple of years before that was when uh, City went in the last day. Like, yeah, you have those. And then you, have, but then like when when it's one like this, or or even two years ago when City hit a hundred, and you're just like. Okay, well, I guess I guess this is just what we're doing this year. Like, part of me wonders, like, I, part of me is like, A, we have the Champions League, so there is, like, an actual playoff. And, and B, it's not every year that it's just a complete runaway. So it, maybe it doesn't matter as much. But it just feels like it's, like, so what? Like, in baseball... Like, you can have the Seattle Mariners win 116 games, and then, but to get, to win the title, they still have to then go through the playoffs and, and, and prove it in October. Um, so, I don't know. Part of me is like, yeah, if you do it over a long enough stretch, you're the best team, and that makes sense. But not having like something at the end to make it actually interesting makes like the next couple months just feel like a slog. So yay slogs. Well, we'll have the Champions League to get it to get excited about, I guess. Woo. <laughs> uh anyway, so Hey, if you thought this Premier League season would be interesting, you were sort of right, I guess. But also sort of wrong. So, that's the Premier League. Um, in review. Uh, news and notes, very short. Um, just we, as we love to do, we love to pimp the athletic here. Um, I just love this article headline. Uh, even Burnley had more possession in the final th third than Arsenal. It's not just the defense Arteta needs to fix. And so, hey, there you go. There you go. Go check that out. A uh, nice little report from James McNicholas uh, that just came out very recently. So uh, so go check that out over on uh, The Athletic. And if you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? Just, just do it already. It's great. Um, so go check that out. Another great piece from The Athletic. Um, as for the Watch 4, um, what are we watching in the week that was or the week that will be? Um, uh, what are we watching? Um, I don't know, actually. Um, we've been re-watching Brooklyn Nine-Nine, and that's always great. Um, but I think what I want to highlight is also, uh, been gaming a little bit, uh, Ori and the Blind Forest. It's a game that's been out for a very long time. Finally just got to sit down and play it for a couple hours yesterday, actually. And, um, uh, it's good. Very good. It's a very, it's beautifully done. Um, wonderful story. Hits you right away, but just punches you in the gut. Um, but it's a good story. It's a good. It's a good game. Very Metroidvania. Um, I have some problems with how it controls at times. It's not the tightest of control games, which really sucks when there's a lot of almost instant death areas. Um, and so that was that was kind of disappointing. Um, part of that's probably just a case of me needing to get good. But uh, when I compare it to something like Hollow Knight, which is very much in the same genre. 
Um, Hollow Knight just plays and feels a lot better. Um, and they both have very great worlds that they've built. Um, so it, I, I don't think it's quite as good as Hollow Knight in that respect. Um, and, and there's a lot of ways I think Hollow Knight is just a little more of a fair game. Um, but Ori in the Blind Forest, if you haven't gotten it, it's, it's not that expensive. I think it's, uh, on sale right now. Um, go check it out. The definitive edition is on Nintendo Switch. It's fantastic. Um, overall though, uh, the, Beyond the frustrating moments, there is a very, very good game in there. And it's very, very fun if you need a game to uh, scratch that Metroidvania itch, which I do have on occasion. Very, very good game. Um, so that is The Watch 4, and that's going to do it for my part. So let's head over to Anfield Corner, where we get the latest from Wes Bradshaw. Wes, take it away. Hey, guys, and welcome to what promises to be a quick version of Anfield I'm Wes Bradshaw, coming to you on Boxing Day. This is actual Boxing Day, the, the biggest day of the year for the Premier League. Just matches upon matches upon matches. It is a smorgasbord for the Premier League lovers. And, of course, the eyes of the Premier League will fall directly in the late match on the team sitting at the top of the Premier League, taking on the team uh, sitting just behind them in second place in the Premier League, Liverpool and Leicester City is your highlight match on Boxing Day. Uh, of course, we'll talk about the outcome of that match next week and what it does for the title race, uh, because as I said, that match doesn't kick off for uh, another for about another eight hours around here. So uh, anyway, we're going to give you a quick little recap of the last week as we saw you last. Uh, last we joined each other. Liverpool had dispatched Monterey in the semifinal of the Club World Cup in Doha. And then this past Sunday, they finished the job and for the first time in the glorious history of Liverpool, Football club. The Reds are the world champions, the FIFA World Champions, the FIFA Club World Cup champions. Uh, they defeat Flamingo 2-1 in extra time. That man Bobby Firmino getting the winning the his folks. He's Austin sitting in. It's been a very long night for me. Uh, working the Christmas night shift. Uh, Bobby Firmino getting the match winner in the 98th minute. And the Reds hold on to lift their third International Cup. Oh, excuse me, folks. That's it, that's it. Their third International Cup of 2019. An historic haul, the first English team to ever win the European title, the Super Cup, and then the Club World Cup in the same season. First English team to pull that one off. Um, and just kind of marks the end of what's been an incredible year for, uh, for the Reds. Uh, this 2019 started off with a loss against Manchester City at the Etihad. And since then, Liverpool have not lost a have not lost a, uh, a league match, have not lost a Premier League match. And as I said, they've added three trophies to the uh, trophy cabinet. And not only that, at the at the time of this recording, as we said, folks, it is Boxing Day. Liverpool do play Leicester today, so I don't know what the I don't know what the number is going to be by the end of this day, but as of recording this, Liverpool 10 points ahead of second place Leicester uh, with a match in hand, and that match in hand is against West Ham United, take it as you will. So just an unbelievable run from Liverpool this, uh, this calendar year, 2019, has got to go down for me as a Reds fan as the greatest... <laughs> the greatest calendar year ever of being a Liverpool fan. Um, and if some things just swing right over the next few months, it's going to go down as the greatest season 
of my Liverpool fandom by far. And the, the rate the Reds are going right now it might just go down as one of, if not the greatest season in Liverpool Football Club history, which with their pedigree is just absolutely incredible. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to say the rest of the Premier League looks like an absolute dogfight. Liverpool look like they're strolling their way to the title while everyone else <laughs> whew, everyone else is in a big fight. It looks like the fight for second is City and Leicester at this point. We'll see how that one plays out as 2020 comes around. Um, that fight, the fight for the fourth spot could be absolutely epic. Uh, you've got Chelsea and Tottenham are right there neck and neck for that one. Um, the second half of the season coming up, there could be some teams who are just like, you know what, we are where we are, we are what we are. You know, let's just let's just maybe try to make a cup run somewhere. Let's try to make a run in Europe. Let's try to make a run in a domestic cup and see what we can do. So I think there's an absolutely epic second half of the season coming up. It's going to be crazy. Uh, you're going to have a fight to avoid relegation. I, I don't think – I think there are a couple of teams down near the bottom who are just kind of crap. But then I think you got some teams that aren't quite crap but are going to be fighting in that relegation battle just because somebody's got to be down there. So uh, just a lot to come up, folks, and I know I'm rambling a little bit. Uh, so if you'll indulge me, please excuse me. It was an extremely long night. Um, just you know, waiting for Boxing Day. God works. <laughs> uh, Ed Green, of course, is chatting in with you. Uh, he, he's down in Brazil. He had to go see firsthand the uh, fallout. Amigo's loss, so I'm sure he's reporting heavily on that. Anyway, guys, look, uh, we, we'll be back next week with, uh, we're going to do a show next week. It'll be New Year's night, I believe. I'm not looking at Keller, I believe it'll be New Year's night. Um, we're both going to be in our normal position, so we're going to do a show. So this is pretty much the last show of 2019, and I just want to say for me and for Ed, you know, guys who download us each and every week we we thoroughly appreciate it you guys are great um we never claim to be the best show but hey there's got to be somebody worse than us out there <laughs> um but we we do enjoy getting together each and every week and talking some football and you know hopefully we can entertain you guys to sub in so anyway we love you see you in 2020 2019 has been the year of the red 2020 long carried on. This is Wes Bradshaw. And this has been your edition of Anfield Corner. Thank you so much for that, Wes. And uh, we will, I believe, be back next weekend. Or next week, sorry. Uh, live on a New Year's Day pod. Woo! No, it's the perfect cure for your hangover from New Year's Eve. It'll be great. Trust me. Um, so, of course, we'll still have plenty of Premier League to talk about. Oh, my God. I just that's Premier League to talk about. Um, gives to give you a preview of the FA Cup fixtures coming up. Um, I also do believe we'll be able to do a quick League Cup semifinal preview. Because uh, I also believe that will be happening midweek before we pod the next time. After after our New Year's Day pod. So, uh, so we'll be able to check that out as well. Uh, but that'll pretty much do it for episode 294 here of the AFA pod. Once again, thanks to NGSC Sports, as well as Alicia's Pillows and Things. You can find them on social media, as well as us as a collective on Twitter. We are at AFA pod. He's at West Bradshaw 21, and I am at Edward Green. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube via our parent show, The All New Sports Show. You can also email us at allnewsportshow at gmail.com. Thanks to our podcast providers, including Podbean.com, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, the TuneIn Radio app, Google Play Music, and the iTunes Music Store. So once again, we'll catch you back on next week's episode, 295. Uh, but for now, and as of course this is the holiday season, for my call in crime, Wes Bradshaw, I am Edward Green. Thank you so much for joining us here. And as always, please, again, especially during this holiday season, stay safe and try to enjoy the football. There's plenty to devour. Not that bowl game crap that's been happening either. The weird names. Nah, English football. Good night, everybody. This show is...
sponsored by Alicia's Pillows and Things. Check out the Facebook page, Alicia's Pillows and Things, where you will find home decor you will not be able to resist at prices anybody can afford. Check out the pillows and stools of your favorite sports teams. Maybe you want a set of your kid's favorite cartoon or movie character. You can also get full body and neck pillows as well. Log on to NGSCSports.com and go to the Alicia's Pillows and Things tab on the homepage to complete your order. It makes a great gift for Christmas at an affordable price. NGSC Sports. We never stop. You're listening to NGSC Sports Radio. Hear us live on NGSCSports.com where you can get awesome analysis for all things sport. Or check out our podcasts on iHeartRadio, Spreaker, iTunes, TuneIn, and much more. For our latest videos, head to NGSC Sports YouTube channel. Follow us on Twitter at NGSC Sports and like us on Facebook. NGSC Sports. We never stop.